Now, happy to introduce um, uh, Domingo Ledesma, who is Associate Professor of um, Hispanic Studies, who has um, built a, a database of cartographic images of the new world, and will be discussing how students have used this database in conjunction with Google Earth, Mapbox, and uh, Palladio. Palladio? Palladio? No, well, actually, I'm not. Palladio, but okay, Palladio. never mind. Forget Palladio and everything. That's it. Um, to support their studies in early modern exploration. Thank you. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Domingo Ledesma, um, and I'm, I'm not going to present as beautifully as uh, Jay has uh, done just recently, uh, because my interest is just to show you um, uh, some of the work my students have done uh, in my classes. Um, my interest in math, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. My interest in math come when I was a child and I just want to know what was beyond my time. Uh, but my interest in maps in, in the classroom uh, comes from the fact that um, I'm, I'm a professor of Hispanic studies and, and I do colonial literature, early modern uh, time literature. So, so then my students have to read 16th and 17th century texts. So like this one here. So, um, and well, this, this is a, um, a book by, by um, a Spanish writer, Fernando de Oviedo. And, and it happens that when you read uh, Spanish literature from the, the, this period, uh, all the, the texts are related to, uh, to maps, to uh, navigation, voyages, uh, uh, new regions, etc. So I realized that, um, that a way to make the student to read this kind of text is to show them that these texts are related to the reality in space. So, so that was something that uh, Jenny mentioned before and, and also Jay. So um, um, I started doing a text encoding and, and in, in the XML file I could in, invent the maps and the student did that work, but that's not what I'm going to talk here today. And then later, uh, <coughs> with the help of Jenny, uh, I started using uh, Google Maps so, um, to, to make the connections between the maps and the text. So the first thing that I needed to do was uh, to create um, a repository of early modern maps that have to be um, in very good resolution, high resolution to uh, make it possible to use it uh, in, in Google Earth or later in the story map or, or RGIS. Um, so I think I'm going to skip that part because um, um, so I created this repository in, uh, using R Store. So if you go to R Store and go to uh, Wheaton College, you'll see um, a collection called uh, Early Modern Representations of the New World. So we have maps like the previous one was uh, uh, but Visconti um, Maiolo. So uh, the first thing the student notice when they they work with maps like this is that maps are not necessarily related to a uh, geographical position. Of course they are, but also maps tells stories. That was something that uh, Jenny also mentioned before. Um, so so this is one of the earliest map of, of uh, the new world that includes the, uh, the Americas. Uh, so uh, the idea was the student can manipulate the map. If they have a very good resolution of the map, they can just take the map and, and play with it. Like um, this next one. So so this is a um, 16th century map, and, and uh, we can see the uh, differences in uh, cartographical uh, methods. But uh, as you see, this is, was made by one of my students because he was interested in studying these little uh, rocks here, it's called Alacranes, because in, in, in that place, in 15 something something that I don't remember now, <laughs> uh, it happens in shipwreck. And, and then uh, you see that uh, there are all these little uh, rocks in, that if you look now in Google, in Google Earth, you don't see them. And, and the reason are in the maps, it was because of navigation. So they have to be there because if they don't know where they are, something can happen. So, so this was the, uh, this is just two examples of the maps that I um, um, 
I, I put it together in this collection of matter and music. And Sorry. So the other part was um, how they can use the map to create itinerary and to um, use the text they are reading and related to the map. So this was another project that was uh, um, related to the uh, voyage by Magellan uh, around the world. So, uh, so you don't see a map here, but you see the annotation that they were doing, uh, taking into account what the, the text was saying. And in the following image instead, we see that students are using one of the maps that they have in the repository, and they relay the map to a particular uh, uh, event in the, in the narrative of the text. So uh, later on, oh, I have to, I'm missing some part. Is that uh, I don't, normally don't use a PowerPoint and I just get lost with it. Uh, that, uh, can you go back to that? This one. So using uh, Google Earth uh, allows us, as probably you know, uh, to do this kind of annotation, use uh, other sources, relate old maps with uh, uh, imagery, spatial imagery now, but also we can create uh, a narration in, in to the map as um, it shows something like that before. So can we go to no, So this is an uh, other map in the, um, I'm, I'm just skipping one part here. Um, uh, we study uh, <coughs> the voyage of Francis Drake in the Caribbean in 1589, in which he sacked three cities, Santo Domingo, Cartagena de Indias, and San Agustin. And in, with, uh, Francis Drake was uh, traveling um, um, Battista Boazio was an Italian cartographer, so he was uh, doing all the, the um, cartographical part of the expedition, but also he was telling what was happening in each city. So my, this was a project that my student did uh, in um, working in a, a group of three or four, and so basically they are recreating the whole story. So, but in order to do this, they have to know exactly what, what happened. And in order to know what happened, they have to read very carefully the text. So, so then, this way I can show you how the text and the map, you can put it together and make the student read a 16th century text that is kind of hard to read it at the, at the beginning. Um, so while well, this go on and on, uh, telling the story, what happened in, in each uh, situation, so you can see the canyons there, and and, and that actually, if you go a little bit, uh, like here, or the dog, sorry, look back again, sorry. So, in fact, this is kind of like a movie. Okay. You see the story, and what I want to show you is something kind of funny. But I didn't say shopping anyone, because here was the place where... Uh, so this is one of these examples in, where, in which the students can use maps and can read text and can make, uh, can understand that the map is not only go from point A to point B, but from telling the story of what is happening. Um, So 
Uh, this semester I was working with another student in creating a uh, um, similar um, idea with Google Earth, but now using RGIS, uh, RGIS the same um, tool that uh, Jay uh, showed before. So what you are seeing here is a map uh, by a Jesuit, uh, Samuel Fritz, which, uh, he was a um, Bohemian Jesuit that went to what is now Ecuador and worked in the missions there. And he created the first, uh, the first map of the Amazon River uh, from the sources that he thought it was in this region, in fact, it's more down, down there, and but till the mouth of the river. Um, and this is one of the most important uh, maps of the Amazon, not only because it's the first map of the Amazon, but because this map uh, was the base on in which all the maps uh, that came later um, were based. So in this map by Fritz, uh, we can see three important things. The first is how you, you build the map, and, and he built the map in situ. So he was traveling all of, all the way to the, to the Amazon River. So uh, this is a version of the same map, uh, a printed version. Instead, the, the map made by Fritz is a manuscript version. And it's an ethnographical map, but it's also a political map, because one of the uh, important uh, tasks that Fritz was doing is was to create uh, uh, the, the limits of the uh, Spanish Empire uh, against the Portuguese that want to get into the whole part of the river. But uh, the interest that we had with my student was just to use um, 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 a GIS to create another map, which will be a map that combines the information that is in the map by Fritz with the information that we have now from uh, geospatial imaging. So now um, we are going to switch to the, the actual um, um, uh, software, which is here, so this is a uh, uh, so then you can see that there are all these points that are related to uh, information that Fritz was, was providing, but also we can get this, the exact position of that information. Um, and in order to do that, there was something that Jenny explained before, and I don't have to go because I don't have time now, is that we, um, uh, we came this Excel file in which we were uh, adding information. So, so the, the information is not only the map, but it's, it's external information. So uh, if we click in one of the, the points, uh, you see that um, that it generates this information, but also um, is there a way to, to show the, the So um, this is, I think I uh, have to finish. Um, uh, but this is another way we can work uh, just to not only to recreate the story that is, is it, the, the, the map is telling us, but also to create another map. So, so from from the map by Fritz and from the imagery that we have now, we have to create a third map that combines the two information. And so, this is the project we are still working on. 